Nice to have you with us. It happened this past Friday. The death of Betty White, the beloved comedian just two weeks shy of her 100th birthday. With Mo Rocca, we look back in laughter. By the time I got to high school, the kids had made up this really mean nickname for me just because I had hairy legs. What'd they call you? Rose with the hairy legs. <laughs> As long as there's been TV, Betty White's been on it. As she told Katie Couric. If you have one good series, you, you know, it's a blessing. Two good series is unusual. Three is, where do you get privileges like that? I taste it every minute. That's why you're always avoiding me. Because you know if you get too close, you're afraid the little pilot light of desire that flickers within you might turn your whole oven on. <laughs> Beginning in 1973, White portrayed happy homemaker slash man-eater Sue Ann Nivens on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. She was an obvious choice because she's so gifted. She was not an obvious choice because she's antithetical to the character. James L. Brooks was the show's co-creator. Oh, my poor baby. <laughs> There's a great bit where Sue Ann pulls out a collapsed souffle and then she closes the oven <laughs> door with her knee. I just remembered it as you said it, yeah. She was inventive. I think there was less direction of her than almost anybody. She had it all. I think she could have been a tremendous dramatic actress if she wanted to. In 1985, Betty White did a 180 and played lovably dim-witted Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls. I should have said no to the Miss St. Olaf beauty pageant. <laughs> It was 1951. That was the first year they let humans enter, too. And in 2010, White co-starred with Wendy Malick in the TV Land series Hot in Cleveland. Canoga Falls is naming the town square after me. Wow, that's great. Oh, did Canoga Falls lose a bed or something? I turned 60 on Hot in Cleveland when we were working together, and she was on the cusp of her 90th at the time, and I looked at her life and thought, oh my God, there's a whole other act ahead of me. White's career in television predated television itself. Months before the medium was introduced to the public at the 1939 World's Fair, 17-year-old Betty appeared on an experimental transmission in Los Angeles. Off-screen, White had two great passions in her life, including animals of all kinds, and oftentimes people would come up to her and say, oh, I want to show you a picture of my kids. And she'd say, oh, great. And when they would show them pictures of actual children, she would look so disappointed and say, oh, they're children. <laughs> she was so hoping for a little lamb. The great two-legged love of her life was her husband, Password host Alan Ludden. She was a contestant, and he, soon enough, popped the question. I said no for a year. It, I wasted a whole year of time we could have had together. I might have been a pretty good game player, but I was a dumb lady. <laughs> what were she and Alan Ludden like as a couple? Tremendously loving, tremendously loving to towards each other. I mean, they, they, you know, they, they were precious to each other. Why, Betty White. Why, Alan Ludden. Well, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. When I look on YouTube at the game show, you can just see them, how much they just like each other. Such adored, I think adored is the word. After Ludden died, White kept on working, hosting Saturday Night Live when she was 88. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night! Something Wendy Malick credits to her unfailingly positive outlook. I remember somebody coming up to her once, I don't remember who it was, and said, you know what I hate? And she said, no, and frankly, I don't care to know. <laughs> and that was pretty much Betty. She didn't want you to dump your dark woes and worries and angst and she just wasn't interested in that it's like you can always find something to be happy or grateful about and she worked very hard at that and that was her credo why is she so beloved betty was a deeply good person something of a higher quality about her um th that i think everybody sensed we all kidded around and palled around, but we treated her a little differently, I think. There was something special about her. I'm honored to be able to, like, 
say a few words about how truly wonderful she was, because sometimes you're asked to do these things and you have to sort of pull out the good parts and leave the rest behind. <laughs> but that ain't, there's, no, there's no leaving the rest behind. It's all good. White worried that people were sick of seeing her on TV. She even speculated this for her gravestone. At last, she's gone. <laughs> she finally got off. <laughs> But even at 99, Betty White left us wanting more. <laughs> Rose, it's not that funny. <laughs> I know. I think I better keep the lid on this paint thinner. <laughs> Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. Best time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. Surprise. It's life with Louie, Louie, Louie. Life with Louie, Louie, Louie. It's life with likeable, lovable, completely huggable. Ah! <gasps> 
Chun Li versus Chun Li. Round one, fight!
Chun Li win. Chun Li versus Vega. Round one. Chun Li versus Gaia. Balance one, fight! Chun Li, 
Chun Li wins. Chun Li versus Tyson. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Fire! Oh.